Alright, in this video we're going to do the uh, derivative of the inverse hyperbolic secant. So here, uh, d dx of inverse hyperbolic secant of x is equal to negative 1 divided by x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, and also we have this restriction that 0 is strictly less than x is less than or equal to 1. And uh, this, again, just like with our other uh, inverse hyperbolic trig restrictions, uh, this just comes from the fact that, or sorry, this comes from the definition of uh, inverse hyperbolic secant of x. Okay, so this isn't really a calculus thing, it's just from the definition of this function. Um, so let's go ahead and see where this derivative formula comes from. And uh, we're going to do it the same way we did the derivative of inverse hyperbolic cotangent. Um, so what we're going to do is say y equals inverse hyperbolic secant of x. Okay, so that means uh, hyperbolic secant of y equals x. But remember, hyperbolic secant is just 1 divided by the hyperbolic cosine. So hyperbolic secant of y is uh, 1 over cosh of y. Okay, and that still equals x. Nothing happened over there yet. All right, now we can multiply both sides by cosh of y and divide both sides by x. And then we're going to get 1 over x equals cosh y. Oops. Uh, and that's the same thing as saying cosh inverse, okay, cosh inverse of uh, 1 over x equals y. Okay, so if 1 over x is cosh y, then cosh inverse of 1 over x is just y. So uh, now what we have is y equals cosh inverse of 1 over x and y equals inverse hyperbolic secant of x. So therefore uh, this and that have to be equal to each other because they're both equal to y. So that's just a transitive property there. So let's go ahead and uh, write that down over here. So first we'll section this off. Um, all right, then we're going to write uh, inverse hyperbolic secant of x equals inverse hyperbolic cosine of 1 over x. Okay, so again, uh, these are equal to each other because they're both equal to y. So transitive property says they have to be equal to each other. So if we want the derivative of this guy, we'll just take the derivative of this guy. And uh, just like in the last video, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so d dx of inverse hyperbolic secant of x. equals d dx of inverse hyperbolic cosine of 1 over x. All right. Um, so now uh, the chain rule says, all right, if you want to do a derivative of this, you got to do the derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy, and then multiply by the derivative of the little guy. So what's the big guy? What's the little guy? Well, start at the x. First thing that happens is 1 over x. And then after that, you do the inverse uh, hyperbolic cosine. So therefore, the inverse hyperbolic cosine is the big guy because it happens last. Okay. So um, if we want to take a derivative of all this, then we do derivative of the big guy, which is what? Well, if we just want to do derivative of inverse cosh of x, uh, we know from an earlier video that that's just 1 divided by the square root of x squared minus 1. All right. So uh, we have that from an earlier video. Um, but we want, uh, the chain rule says we have to evaluate this at the little guy. So derivative of the big guy is this, but we evaluate at the little guy. So the little guy is 1 over x. So that means if we want to do chain rule, um, then what we have is equals 1 divided by the square root of, instead of x squared, we're going to have 1 over x squared. So 1 over uh, x squared, like this, then minus 1 and then multiply by the derivative of the little guy. So let's uh, clear some room here. Multiply by the derivative of the little guy. Okay, so uh, again, chain rule says uh, derivative of the big guy evaluated as the little guy. That's why this is 1 over x instead of just x, because we evaluate uh, this at the little guy, which is 1 over x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the little guy. Okay, uh, so 1 over x, that's just x to the negative 1, right? 
that's uh, x to the negative first power. So if we want to take a derivative of that, that's just power rule, and what we're going to get is uh, negative 1 times x to the negative second power, right? Um, which is the same thing as negative 1 over x squared. So let's just go ahead and write it like that. Uh, negative 1 over x squared. Okay, so that's what we've got here. Um, now let's simplify this a little bit. Uh, 1 over x quantity squared like that, that's 1 over x times 1 over x, which is just 1 over x squared, right? So that's one way of thinking about it, but either way, uh, it's going to simplify to 1 over x squared, like that. So let's go ahead and rewrite that like that. 1 over x squared, like that. Okay, so now we have that. Uh, what do we do next? Now, uh, inside of here, we have 1 over x squared minus 1, so let's get a common denominator. Okay, so this big one right here, we're going to rewrite that as x squared over x squared. All right. So now what we have is 1 minus x squared in here, uh, and then all that's going to be divided by x squared now. So let's go ahead and write that over here. Um, so this is going to be equal to uh, 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared over x squared times negative 1 over x squared. Okay. All right, so we have that so far. So now uh, let's do a couple things uh, together in the next step. So first of all, um, I want to combine these two fractions into one. So we have this fraction here, and we also have this fraction here. Uh, I want to combine them into one fraction. So in the next step, let's say equals, um, on the top we have 1 times negative 1, so that's just a negative 1. And then on the bottom we have this big mess square root uh, times this x squared. So I want to put the x squared over here first. I want to do that. Okay. And then we'll multiply by the square root. But I also want to uh, split up the square root. So what is this? It's square root of something divided by something else. So that's the same thing as square root of the top uh, divided by the square root of the bottom. Okay, so we have square root of the top uh, divided by the square root of the bottom. All right. So square root of 1 minus x squared over x squared is the square root of 1 minus x squared over the square root of x squared. All right. So that's, um, that's how that's going to simplify in that step. So let's zoom back out just so we can see the whole thing here. So this, uh, we combine these two into one fraction, so the top just became negative 1. The bottom, uh, we put the x squared on the left now, uh, just because it's more customary to do that if you have the radical here. Um, uh, and then we split up the radical into uh, two radicals here. So radical of this divided by that is going to be radical of the top divided by radical of the bottom. All right, now, uh, next, what happens? Square root of x squared, um, just by definition, that's the same thing as saying absolute value of x. So when you simplify that, you just get the absolute value of x, right? Um, but uh, we can do better than that, actually, because uh, we have this extra restriction up here. Okay, 0 is strictly less than x, is less than or equal to 1. So that tells us that x is never negative. Okay, it's always positive. Yeah, it's pretty small, right? Because it's between 0 and 1. Um, it's, you know, it's, x is bigger than 0, but less than or equal to 1. Uh, but that's okay. The point is that x is never negative. Okay? So these absolute values have to be here to guarantee that this expression is always positive. But we have that restriction that x is never negative. So these absolute values can just be dropped. Uh, and that's good. That's really good, because that uh, makes it a little bit simpler. So instead of absolute value of x, we're just going to have x. So that's good. Uh, all right, what happens next? Well, next, uh, here's an x squared being multiplied by this divided by x. So one of these x's cancels with this x down here. And then we're just left with uh, negative. I'm going to pull the negative off. And then on the top, we just have a 1 left. And then what's left on the bottom? x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, then divided by 1, but if you divide by 1, you're not really doing anything at all, so it's, might as well just not write it. Um, so here's what we have, negative 1 divided by x root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, and that's, our, uh, that's what we wanted, right? So that's the proof um, that the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic secant of x is negative 1 divided by x 
times the square root of 1 minus x squared.